Sorry, the door was slightly ajar and, and no one answered. Um, I'm wondering if you might be able to help me. Seems to be a little lost. Uh, I'm looking for uh, looking for 15A Marine Parade. I thought this was it, uh, but it can't be. Sorry, I'm looking for the office of, of Mr. Baker. I am Madame Rosa. I'm going to stroll to Carol Carney to go to tell her. Come, Mr. Docutus. Look, I'm Timothy Clark, uh, BA, LLB, <laughs> local solicitor. I'm looking for the office of Mr. Baker, 15A Marine Parade. My order is strong today. You have had a long journey. Yeah, over four hours. I see a young, red headed woman. It's my wife, Susan, probably. A, a mole just here? I see a strange, broken, orange contraption. That'll be our 1982 Corolla. It broke down an hour out of town. That's why I'm running slightly late. You see, I was supposed to be meeting Mr. Baker at 12 p.m. He was very specific about the time. Mr. Baker of Baker and Baker Solicitors. You see, I've answered his ad to be his local solicitor. I gather he's going on holiday. It's probably just going to be conveyancing, but I'm pretty sure I can handle all the work. Oh, sorry, I'm running away. Look, to be honest, I've been up all night packing our stuff and I'm exhausted. Anyway, Mr. Baker. The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Shakespeare, Henry the Fourth, part two. Do you take your calling seriously? Very. <laughs> oh, when I was seven, all my mates wanted to drive fire trucks and uh, I wanted to chase ambulances. <laughs> I see a wonderful opportunity. Hopefully that's Mr. Baker's practice, if I can ever find it. I see you coming into large sums of money. Really? I thought it was just a small firm. I see you locking the door. Sorry? I see you locking the door, if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, look, thanks anyway. I'll, uh, I'll leave, you, leave you to it. If you'd lock the door with you on this side, please. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not such a great believer. In fact, you wouldn't believe what a non-believer I am. And look, I really have to find Mr. Baker. Mr. Howe and Nathaniel Edward Baker, who wrote to you on the 10th of last month, enclosing a business card, a short letter, and $40 towards your travelling costs. If you lock the door... Please, sit down. A chocolate digestive? <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, Madam Rosa, if you could just contact Mr. Baker and, and let him know I'm here, I'd be greatly appreciative. I'm already 30 minutes late. I wasted time, and now doth time waste me. Shakespeare, Richard II. <laughs> Give me your hand, my dear. Look, I really am in a hurry. <laughs> Ah, you have a great capacity for love. Oh, married to Susan. We've only been together for four weeks. Oh, that could explain it. <laughs> you have very long nails. What does that mean? You should cut them. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Timothy, sometimes things are exactly how they are here, and sometimes they are quite the opposite. Do you shock easily? Well, it depends. Why? As I say, sometimes things are not what they are here. Good God, you're a bloke. Well, I am, and I'm more than that. <laughs> really? I'm the bloke you're looking for. Uh, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Baker's the name. How of Nathaniel Edward Baker, LLB. So your name is Madam Rosa? Well, not officially, no. What is this, just a hobby? I mean, how do you explain the, the crystal ball, the tarot cards, and the uh, dressing up as a woman? Who happens to This is how I make my living. Timothy, I think I should be completely straight with you. <laughs> Actually, I prefer that. <laughs> I may have gotten you here under false pretenses. Well, you mean Baker and Baker solicitors? Yeah, they don't exist anymore. They used to. My brother and I set it up about ten years ago. <coughs> but one day, he took off with all the money in a trust account. Must have been quite a shock. Oh, no. I knew he was going to do it. Did you know? <laughs> the gift. A 
I've always had it. I could see the future. <laughs> to be honest, I was a lousy lawyer. My brother, he was quite good, but he wasn't entirely honest. No, after he took off, I had to pay the clients back somehow. And I wasn't making any money as a lawyer, so I turned to my other gift, the gift of sight. You mean all this is profitable? Oh, yes. Lawyers are to a penny, but clairvoyance, real clairvoyance, are priceless. <laughs> Within six months, I paid back all the clients. I mean, there's a lot of people who give a lot of money to know the future. And, um, I'd be a millionaire by now if it wasn't for the, um, I see. <coughs> How do you explain that women's clothes are? Is that your personal preference? Oh, well, Timothy, how many men do you know who are clairvoyants and astrologers and mediums and tarot readers? No. Well, exactly. They're always women. For some reason, the public doesn't take the idea of men telling the future. I gather most women don't think most guys know a day is little about what the future holds. No, that's how Madame Rosa came to pass. You see, people who read palms and tea leaves should be women, preferably large with them, long beads and flowing headdresses. <laughs> I mean, I hate stereotyping, but you know, it pays the bills. <laughs> Besides, there was another reason. I was in need of a disguise. Disguise. Mm. Does the name Giovanni Van de Pickle mean anything to you, Timothy? Sure does. I'm surprised that you've led a very sheltered existence. No, no, the Van de Pickles, they're the leading crime family in the state. Drugs, pornography, gambling, anything with a nasty smell can be traced back to a Van de Pickle. <coughs> and who do the Van de Pickles turn to for advice? I don't know. Baker and baby solicitors, of course. Usually my brother. But after he left, Giovanni Van de Pickle relied on me for everything. Investment advice, conveyancing, estate handling. Ugh, it was terrible. But you can't say no to a band of people. Then, one day, I've heard about Milton Park. 20 hectares of prime ocean land going for next to nothing. Huh. I told Giovanni about it, and he instructed me to purchase it. To this day, I don't know what happened. A mental block. But drink too many. I missed the settlement of the Vendor sold it to someone else. I knew I couldn't tell Giovanni, so I disappeared. And to this day, he still thinks that Milton Park belongs to him. I knew Mr. Baker couldn't be around when he found out, so Mr. Baker was never heard of again. And a short time later, Madame Rosa arrives and sets up shop. Well, that's all very interesting, but I'm afraid I don't understand where I'm fitting. I've driven for four hours. I've given up my flat. I've, I've uprooted my new wife. Well, because I thought there was a local position available at Baker and Baker Solicitors, which clearly there isn't. Oh, Timothy, I was your age once. A young solicitor, brimming with anticipation of my own practice. But I let down my profession. I failed myself and my clients. For years I wanted to give something back, and now I can. I don't understand. Setting up a young lawyer in his own firm, giving him the opportunity to prove a credit to his profession, it's been my dream. Well, I'm not with you. Timothy, you have great expectations. Well, you mean me? You mean I set up my own firm? I do. <laughs> this will be the office of Timothy Clark and Co. Solicitors. <laughs> of course, you might need to alter the decor a little. 